Welcome back, SQL Enthusiast. In today's tutorial, we'll dive into the fascinating world of transactions and the ACID property in SQL Server. Transactions are an essential concept for ensuring data integrity and consistency. And for this lesson, we'll understand the meaning of transaction in the context of SQL Server. We'll explore the ACID properties of RDBMS in general. And finally, we'll write SQL codes to show you how TCL commands work in Microsoft SQL Server to perform efficient transactions. Hi, this is Joe Edgo, and welcome to Lesson 13 on Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2022. In SQL Server, a transaction is a logical unit of work that consists of one or more database operations. Transaction helps maintain data integrity by ensuring that either all the operations within the transaction succeed or none of them do. Consider a classic example of a common banking transaction like a fund transfer. If I want to transfer a certain amount of money from my bank account to another person's bank account, both operations, the debit and the credit, must happen for a transaction to succeed. Otherwise, none of them do. In other words, a transaction is a set of operations performed so all operations are guaranteed to succeed or fail as one unit. Now, what about the ACID property? ACID stands for Atomicity, Consistency, Isolation, and Durability, the four key properties that ensure the reliability of transactions. The first property, Atomicity, guarantees that a transaction is treated as a single indivisible unit of work. Either all the changes made within the transaction are committed to the database or none of them are. This ensures that the data remains consistent even in the event of failures. The second property, consistency, ensures that a transaction brings the database from one consistent state to another. It enforces the integrity constraints defined on the database ensuring that only valid data is entered or modified. The third property, isolation, refers to the property that guarantees that the execution of concurrent transactions does not interfere with each other. It ensures that each transaction is isolated from other transactions until it is committed, preventing conflicts and maintaining data integrity. And finally, durability. This property ensures that once a transaction is committed, its changes are permanently stored and will survive any subsequent system failures such as power outages or crashes. The committed data remains intact, allowing for reliable and consistent recovery. Now that we understand the ACID properties, let's see how we can implement transactions in SQL Server. I'll guide you through a step-by-step -step example to demonstrate the process. Open your Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and create a new database that consists of one table, Accounts. This table has account number field, which is set as the primary key, the account holder's last name, first name, as well as the remaining balance. Also, this table has one check constraint. A negative balance is not allowed. This accounts table has four records to test, so let's begin. Suppose we want to have a simple banking transaction that performs the transfer of funds from one account to another. So I'll create a stored procedure called USP Fund Transfer. And then this stored procedure has three required parameters. The sender's account number of type int, the recipient's account number, and the amount of money to be transferred. So to successfully transfer a fund, this would require two individual updates. First is to update the accounts table and set a new balance to the previous balance minus the amount to be transferred. This would debit the fund transfer amount from the sender's account. And then, the second update is to credit the same amount to the recipient's account. And now, when I execute this stored proc, I am required to pass in the sender's account number, say Joedgo is the sender, 
And then the recipient is Diana Prince and I want to transfer 2000. Then I'll select everything from this table again. So observe what happens to the two records as I execute this code. Verify if we can perform a successful fund transfer through this stored procedure. And we did. Account number 1 has been debited with 2000 and account number 3 has been credited with 2000. While this looks good, this approach doesn't fully support the ACID property of a true transaction. Why? First, let's test the atomicity property. Treat these two separate update operations as a single indivisible unit of work. Both must succeed or both must fail. Now, what do you think would happen if I execute the same code? Debit 2000 from account 1 and credit 2000 to account 3. Observe carefully. When I execute this, it throws an error message saying, conflicted with the check constraint. Of course, this account table has a rule that the balance field does not allow negative values. So, it failed the first update command, the debit. Account 1 balance remains 1000. But we have a problem. As account 3's balance has been credited with 2000, the second update command succeeds. Our current stored procedure violates the atomicity property of a true transaction, that is, to treat all operations as a single indivisible unit of work. Now, in effect, it also violates the second ACID property, consistency. We now have an inconsistent record. While account 1's balance remain intact, but account 3's balance has been changed. So, I'll alter this stored proc to implement a true transaction. In SQL Server, you can start a transaction by using the begin transaction command. But when you start a transaction, it must finish with either the commit transaction command or a rollback transaction command. Commit transaction means to permanently save all the changes which you have made in the current transaction. In this case, all the data modifications made by these two update operations will be permanently saved. However, rollback means to erase all data modifications made from the start of this transaction. Now, the question is, how do we know when to issue a commit transaction or a rollback transaction? Here's the idea. The commit transaction is usually placed after the last operation in a transaction, which means when this code is rich, there are no problems that existed in the preceding operations. So, commit all the changes. However, if something went wrong in one of the operations that is part of a transaction, then execute the rollback command. So, how do we know if there is a problem? A simple solution is to use a try-catch block. In SQL Server, you can implement a try-catch block like this. Begin try, and then we enclose this entire code where a potential error could occur, ending with an end try. And now, if something goes wrong inside this try block, we handle it using this begin catch and catch block. So, inside this, we can execute the rollback transaction to undo all the changes made since one of the operations has failed. And that's it. We can also perform other things like print an error message. Now, I'll execute this again to see if it works. Please observe what's going to happen to the balance of the two records, account 1 and account 3. And as you noticed, nothing changed. It means that when 2000 was being subtracted from account 1's balance, an error occurred due to a check constraint violation. And in effect, that error has been handled by this catch block and executes a rollback command. The record remains in a consistent state. Now, I'll execute another fun transfer to verify if it can also commit a transaction when there is no error in any of the operations. So, I'll transfer 500 and watch as I execute this. 
And we have a successful transaction. And that's it. Congratulations on learning transactions and the ACID property in Microsoft SQL Server. Remember to experiment and explore further to deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel for more tech-related content. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.